strong axis of a lot of successful retail along the water here, and yet just two blocks off the water, we have this this clogged artery that that prevents people from from uh, moving up further north. There's a lot of wonderful restaurants and shops up there that no one ever discovers because they never get past this point. Historically, the market was a lot more significant than what it is today, and the art, uh, the market today is very inward oriented. The arts are blocked up. There's a lot of traffic congestion. You have loading and service and parking all competing in the same area. And yet, the block is empty. There's no one that lives on the upper floors. There's no businesses on the first floor except for a few that are struggling. What we've uh, found is that there's five basic constraints that we think uh, cause this, this artery to be clogged. And uh, parking certainly is a problem. Uh, the lack of quality uh, uh, public space, loading service located at the front doors, ground level retail, uh, Broadway market itself, just the physical characteristic, if you, if you just walk around it, you'll get a sense that it's very inward oriented, doesn't really lend itself going either uh, to the east or the west side of the block itself. Uh, but the biggest thing that we get really excited about is perhaps the redevelopment of the market itself. Obviously, we don't own the market. We certainly would like to work in conjunction with the market board, and we've had uh, some dialogue with them. We're going to continue that dialogue, and uh, uh, we're hoping that there may be an opportunity to see this market be redeveloped back into its glory days. This market really used to be a, a, a grand two-story structure before a fire back in the, in the 1950s. And We'd actually like to turn the clock back and really look at recreating a market this size. Um, something that established a node that when you look south from Hopkins that identifies you know, the grand opening or the grand entrance to Fells Point. Today, this is what you see. It's, it, you know, this facade is built out in the street. It blocks view corridors. Um, there's surface parking, uh, parallel parking on either side of the market, which doesn't allow any sidewalks. All the existing arches along the side have been bricked up and painted. It's not inviting at all. There's a, a dumpster here that everyone complains about how smelly it is. Baltimore has this rich historical tradition, and at the ball in the Baltimore Public Markets is a treasure to the city of Baltimore. With or without this project, I, as I would see. The, the Broadway market, or the Broadway markets per se, would be is that they would go through the same kind of renaissance. And please don't take this in the moment, but on their own. Mm -hmm. They would go through the, if the community was changing and you were investing in the area, I could see that the market themselves would go through a renaissance. I think the, the market itself, as we've talked about, the layout of it um, is detrimental. It's, it's inward oriented. Uh, I think it, it needs some creative eye to look at it, travel around, look at other successful markets, see what they've done. Yes, more. Well, I love the old market picture. I think everybody does, and it's sort of the thing that makes people go, oh, oh, what can, how can we do this? I, I mean, it's got to be terribly costly to rebuild that building as part of your total project. We, we did some quick studies on uh, looking at that North Market, putting a, a roof on it, uh, keeping it at one level. Um, the challenge really is architecturally that, that building to the north is so so dominant with the thick walls and thick arches that looks really out of scale as a one-story building because it would have never been built that way as a one-story building to begin with. It, it was built that way to support a, a, a big structure. And I think that, I mean, not saying that something at one level could be done, it's just, um, to me it just doesn't look right. And uh, I guess we, uh, when we started going down the path of, of, of looking at what really should happen here, it just made a lot of sense to us to turn the clocks back to having that very dominant um, historic structure there. From our perspective is we have all these vacant properties on either side, and unless something substantial happens to the market itself, then we may not be interested in, in, in sticking the amount of capital in here because it's such an eyesore. There's no sidewalks on either side of the market. All the arches are blocked up. It's not very inviting. People have to walk through a parking lot and buy a dumpster that, that always smells, everyone's complaining about it, and then to go in and buy food. It's not a real inviting place to have. The, the market board, basically, they're, they're, they're people that manage a business. And 
the, the markets right now are not profitable. There's a lot of vacancies in here, and a lot of businesses left this summer. We certainly have high hopes, and we're going to tie all of our development into this. If this doesn't happen, this is not going to happen. And the market from, from day one has been a focal point of this project is an icon that desperately needs to happen. What we've asked and what we uh, have initially, at least verbally, have a, a worked out tentatively with the market authority is that allow us control of that for however many years, uh, 75 years, we'll lease it, and in exchange we'll make all the improvements to it, and, but we manage it. And, uh, and so without that understanding, we have zero interest in moving forward. So on top of all the other issues that we have to explore and resolve and everything from height to parking to market, transfer of folks down here, this one's probably the most important part of it all because this, it starts right here. Baltimore has an incredible market system, a public market system. The, the Broadway market was the first, by the way, in, in, in Baltimore, as I understand it. The first thing the city did, and was before we were there, that they closed the markets off to the public, that they built walls where, where you, you couldn't see in the market anymore. With, with the Safeway coming in and maybe Whole Foods, you know, people it just went other places and slowly but steadily the, the market declined and, and quite frankly the city let it decline and it's a real shame. When we first moved here, I didn't know a lot about the markets. Uh, we had gone into the markets. Uh, I loved the idea of having a fishmonger right in my own backyard. But as we lived here more and more, we kept seeing a decline in the markets. Uh, Mike Beckner, who owns Brick Oven Pizza, had a postcard made up and the postcard had the turn of the century picture of the broad, upper Broadway market on it. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, this is amazing. This building is beautiful. Such a gorgeous building, two stories tall with a, with a, a, a little uh, uh, piece on the top. And you look at it and you say to yourself, you know, that would be a, a signature building for Fells Point. That would be something that people would come to Fells Point just to see that particular building. So I started to do some investigation and found out that in the 1960s or something, there was a fire and, and the city tore it down and, and all we were left with was this big brick of a building that sits in the middle of, um, of the 600 block of Broadway. And so you hear about the decline of this amazing signature building and one of the first things that we had talked to Dave and Dan about when they were talking about this. And I had said this to other board members of mine when we were talking and, and they, they laughed at me with you know incredulity, uh, saying that there was no way that we would ever be able to restore this building. And I said, you know, I really think we ought to. And when we talked to Dave and Dan, they thought that that was something that they really would like to do, and they completely embraced it and made it a core part of their of their uh, development. Uh, so much so that they actually think now it was their original idea, but it actually wasn't. It was my idea. I think that the project uh, goes very far in addressing major concerns um, that the historic community would have with development in that it is preserving so many buildings, preserving storefronts, um, you know, window detailing, cornices, doorways. It's also the only vehicle that I could imagine that would provide for the replacement of the second story of the marketplace, which really takes that entire quarter back to another time in terms of its character. And, and will just, I think, rejuvenate the market. It's totally separate from this project in Baltimore, you know, there's been one of the biggest recessions that the co country has experienced in, you know, in, in recent history. Um, how has that impacted and how have, how have you interacted with... with Great. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it changes all the rules of the game. I mean, uh, I mean, I think we're very fortunate that we have a program of apartments uh, and, and, and retail, although retail uh, financing is very challenging. We have 160 residential units uh, in, a, in an urban area that um, ha has a lot of amenities, and if there was anything out there where lenders are looking to place their money, it would be that, although 
still incredibly challenging. Yeah. Well, the, the project, the marketplace at Fells Point, uh, includes the east and west blocks on the 600 block of South Broadway. That's private, privately developed and privately financed uh, um, part of the project. And then another part of that is the redevelopment of both markets, the north market on the 600 block and the existing 700 block market. And then the third part is all the streetscape improvements, including the Fells Point Square. So there's really three, the marketplace of Fells Point has become three separate projects. Yeah, the south market will expand and add an additional structure there in the north market, which is in part where this also began, will return to its original grandeur. And so now you have a beautiful new gateway to Fells Point. About a year ago, we uh, started working on the designs both inside and out of the, uh, the South Shed. This is first phase of the market restoration track. Eventually, we'll have another uh, similar looking structure that will occupy this parking lot. And then the third and final piece will be the restoration of the North Shed, which is up on the 600 block. Prior to the recession coming, we were on track to close with construction financing with PNC and uh, and that just as soon as Lehman Brothers collapsed so did uh, that financing. Prices collapsed and so the equity we did have in there also evaporated too. So as the HUD financing uh, evaporated the market started to recover and we started then having folks interested in now looking at the project particularly since we already started the project and because of the demolition we uh, felt really that we had a, an obligation to finish what we started. If I'm going to let the project go and collapse my equity and not even have ownership in it, I'd rather be with the group that's going to finish what we started. And that's what we got out of Dobin Group. And so although South Broadway Properties had sold off its interest and selling off its interest for a dollar, um, we still uh, maintain our uh, our legal arrangement that we have with the city on the market sheds, particularly in the North Shed. It was a vital part of the whole project right from the beginning. We, Dan and I, just kept thinking that this project, this block will never ever become more than what it is because the market building itself was such a negative drag on, on the block. And uh, so early on, it was uh, not only a big part of the project, but it also started to become, um, the project itself. When people think of and hear about Marketplace at Fells Point, they think of that, you know, that market building with the second floor on and its cupola, this iconic uh, structure that sits there in the beginning of Lower Fells Point. So let's start with the North Shed. So first of all, I just kind of just because a lot of the rumors were flying out there, and let me just say that uh, after quite some time, it was it came clear to me and and with the help of. Uh, Chesapeake Group, that the second floor financially just wasn't going to be able to uh, work in terms of getting uh, construction financing on that. I struggled personally with it and asked them to delay any decisions on that until we have exhausted every possibility. But as time ticked by, uh, we needed to either act on the restoration of that uh, the market pieces or we would risk the, losing the arrangement we had with the city. And we felt that it was important to at least delay the second floor at this point so that we would proceed and move forward with the restoration of the building, putting the sidewalks around the building, uh, opening up all those arches, and um, really creating what has always been intended for the North Shed. The only difference is, is that the upper floor will have to be for a later date. It would be one thing if we, as a group, uh, had both east and west blocks and we were able to digest uh, the cost of the markets in with the development of the market piece project. Is that what you're originally thinking of? Correct. Yeah. And, and so you can almost say, okay, the cost to add that second floor on is pretty high. Uh, and what we would do with it, uh, you collect some rents uh, for some use. You know, we looked at everything from boutique office space to, um, to, uh, a reception hall and so there would certainly is generate some money and the first floor obviously as well too is uh is a retail uh space but you can uh almost break even that model if you digest it with the construction of the, the east and west blocks by itself it's just almost doesn't really even come close and so while we were 
hopeful. Uh, we recognized uh, short order that um, that that wasn't going to work by itself.